find the arc length of the curve given by the vectored valued function r of t over the closed interval from zero to natural log three. Before we begin, let's take a look at this graphically. The space curve is graphed in purple. The two trace vectors at t equals zero and t equals natural log three are graphed in blue. They're a little hard to see. The first trace vector is a small vector here. The terminal point is this black point. And then when t equals natural log three, the terminal point is this black point here on the left. So we're determining the length along the curve between the two black points. Not the most exciting graph, but that is the arc length we'll be determining. So going back to our work, the arc length formula is shown below, where the arc length s equals the integral from a to b of the magnitude of r prime of t dt, which is equal to the integral shown here on the right. To begin, x of t equals five e to the four t, y of t equals negative two e to the four t, and z of t equals negative e to the four t. And now to find the derivatives, we'll have to apply the chain rule, where x prime of t is equal to five times the derivative of e to the four t, which is equal to e to the four t times the derivative of four t, which is four. Simplifying, we have x prime of t equals 20 e to the four t. And I'll also determine y prime of t. y prime of t is equal to negative two e to the four t times four, which equals negative eight e to the four t. And then for z of t, z prime of t equals negative e to the four t times four, giving us z prime of t equals negative four e to the four t. And now we can set up the integral for the arc length. The arc length equals the integral from zero to natural log three of the square root of the sum of the squares of the derivatives, giving the square root of the sum of the square of 20 e to the 4t, the square of negative eight e to the 4t, and the square of negative four e to the 4t. The square of 20 e to the 4t is equal to 400 e to the 8t. Notice when raising e to the 4t to the second power, we multiply the exponents. The square of negative eight e to the 4t is 64 e to the 8t. And the square of negative four e to the four t is 16 e to the eight t. Simplifying under the square root, we have the square root of 480 e to the eight t. And now to simplify, the square root of 480 is equal to four times the square root of 30, because 480 is equal to 16 times 30, and the square root of 16 is four, and the square root of e to the eight t is equal to e to the four t. We can write the square root as a rational exponent of one half. When we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents. Eight t times one half gives us an exponent of four t. So now we have the integral from zero to natural log three of four square root 30 times e to the four t dt. To integrate here, we need to perform u substitution, where u is equal to four t, and therefore du equals four dt. Solving for dt, we have one fourth du equals dt. Let's write the integral with respect to u leaving off the limits of integration because zero and natural log three are t values, not u values. With respect to u, we have the integral of four square root 30, and then e to the four t gives us e to the u, and dt equals one fourth du. Simplifying, notice we have four divided by four, which simplifies to one. Integrating, we have square root 30 e to the u plus c, which means when integrating above with respect to t, the antiderivative is square root 30 e to the four t. Let's go ahead and factor out the square root 30. And now performing this substitution, when t equals natural log three, we have e to the four natural log three. And when t is zero, we have e to the power of four times zero. And now let's work on simplifying e to the power of four natural log three. For a quick review, remember we can write four natural log three using log properties as natural log three to the fourth. We can move the coefficient of four to the position of the exponent, and three to the fourth equals 81. So we can write four natural log three as natural log 81, and also remember, if we have e to the power of natural log x, the expression simplifies to just x. So we have square root 30 times the difference of e to the power of natural log 81, and then minus e to the zero, which gives us minus one, and e to the power of natural log 81 simplifies to 81, giving us square root 30 times the difference of 81 and one, giving us 80 times the square root of 30 as the exact arc length, which is approximately 438.1780. I hope you found this helpful.